Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm very excited to welcome for the first time on the show our autism expert this morning. It's Julie Mominy. And Julie, we're so thrilled that you're on the show this morning. Yeah, I'm thrilled as well. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about what your role is at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. So I am the clinical manager for three different centers in the Orange County area. And essentially, I assist with, you know, overseeing the clinical services and ensuring that there's clinical quality with the ABA programs. And then I also assist with just the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the centers as well. Well, that's phenomenal. And so you've joined us today, and we've sent you some questions over. I'm going to jump right into the first question here. Uh, hello, ladies. My son is six, has therapy, was doing great. The last two months, he's been very whiny and overly extreme tantrums. Before, we used to get them under control, but now anything triggers it. Why does it seem like he is going backwards? Uh, didn't change anything in the environment or diet. Also, he he seeks negative attention. How can we stop that? We ignore it. Do you have any other suggestions? And they send their love. So what what would you say to that mom, Julie? Sure. Um, so increases or changes in behavior can occur for a variety of different reasons. So we would first want to take a look at whether or not the behavior intervention plans are being implemented with accuracy and consistency. So before we would make any changes to how we're managing the behavior, we want to make sure that the intervention is being implemented with the technicians um, that are working with the child, as well as being carried over by, um, you know, all those interacting with the child. So this would include, um, you know, parents as well, or you know, others interacting with the child in different settings, such as school or the community. So you'd first want to make sure that the strategies are being done the way that they should be being done. Um, the second thing we might want to consider is whether or not the function or why the behavior is happening has changed. So um, anytime we create an intervention plan, we determine why the behavior is happening and that basically controls how we manage the behavior. So if we have an action plan for uh, tantrum behavior in which the child is looking to escape or avoid a situation, and that's actually not why the child is engaging in the behavior anymore, then we would want to make sure that we modify the strategies that we're using so that it um, connects to the function of the behavior. Um, the second thing, too, is I know um, the mom had mentioned that there had been no changes in environment, um, so we may want to consider, you know, there may not be a change in the home environment, but maybe there's a change in the school environment or an extracurricular activity environment. environment. So at that point, we would want to take a look at all those different settings to ensure that there's no changes. Um, and something that we consider a change, you know, we may not notice, but can affect behavior. So it could be a change in, you know, a schedule. It could be a change in a team member, a change in diet or medication or sleep pattern. So we want to make sure that we assess all of those factors. Um, another thing to consider, too, is when the treatment program progresses and the curriculum gets more difficult, we may see an increase in behavior just because the child is being challenged. So at that point, we would want to make sure that we are actively teaching, um, you know, coping strategies and the replacement behavior. So teaching the child to appropriately get what they want by um, appropriate means. So usually um, we would be teaching communication because that is a significant deficit area for those diagnosed with autism. So we would want to make sure that we were actively teaching skills and communication um, so the child can better cope with the, the treatment. Um, and then in regards to the question about negative attention seeking, um, again, we would want to assess whether or not 
the intervention plan is being conducted the way that it should be. So there are different parts of an intervention. Um, there are what we call antecedent um, modifications or preventative strategies. So things that we're doing um, in the environment to prevent the behavior from happening um, at all. Um, and then we would also be actively teaching the replacement behavior or, you know, in this case, if it's negative attention seeking, the function is most likely because the child wants attention. So we want to make sure that we are teaching the child how to get others' attentions by, you know, saying, hey, look at me, or um, check me out, or, you know, appropriate ways of being silly. Um, because oftentimes, um, you know, children on the spectrum have a difficult time um, picking up humor um, and being able to identify, you know, um, how others are perceiving them. So sometimes they may think that they're being silly or funny, but they're actually, you know, maybe annoying somebody. So, um, you know, just kind of teaching them how to, um, you know, be a kid and, and be silly in appropriate ways. And then, of course, you know, if they are engaging in problem behaviors to get some sort of negative attention, you definitely don't want to provide attention when those behaviors occur. So attention can be um, vocal attention, you know, saying don't do that or that's not funny uh, or, you know, making eye contact or, you know, reacting with um, your body language or your facial expressions. So all of those things should be very neutral so that there's no reaction to the behavior. So that's um, a lot. Anyway. <laughs> that's, a lot. Uh, that's a lot, Julie, and that's really helpful. But keeping in mind that a lot of times parents go, well, nothing changed. That thing you said, nothing changed. But somewhere something changed. And you really got to put on your sleuth hat to figure out where something changed. And it could be something positive. It could be something that the child experienced as being negative. It could be so many different things. But you got to figure out what where that loop is. Uh, there was a period of time in which my son started hitting out of nowhere. And we were like, what happened? And I said, nothing changed. Nothing's going on. And they said, somebody is allowing this behavior. And I was like, no, it's not happening. It's in your mind. It's not happening. And then I was in a meeting with the OT and she said how he was hitting her every single day. And I said, what are you doing? And she was like, what do you mean? And I, and I was like, are you blocking it? Are you, is there a concept? Is there any, and she was like, oh, it just happens. And, you know, once we taught her what to do about that, the hitting magically went away. So just make sure that you're listening to Julie and, and following up on things. Um, I'm going to ask Trayvon if, Trayvon if we can take a really quick, short break. Um, we just have to adjust something. And then we want to come back to you, Julie. Do you mind hanging on one second? Sure, no problem. Okay, Trayvon, have we got a really short break we can go to? Okay, we're going to take one short break. Don't go anywhere, and we're going to be right back. 